Okay, let's start over here on controlling. You see some of our reactive tendencies are around controlling and those of us who have this reactive tendency uh, are, tend to be more task orientated. So we get a lot of stuff done. But out of our anxiety to get that done, we can tend to be experienced as overly driven, overly ambitious, perfectionistic, autocratic. We experience broadly as controlling. So why is it that we get so addicted to this micromanaging part of ourselves? It's because we don't know who we are if we're not actually winning. The fear of not winning, of not actually coming out on top is so great that we can't leave any risk that that could never happen. And giving work to other people feels so vulnerable that we can't risk it. Because if it falls over or if it fails, that's a big risk, personal risk to me. That's my biggest fear. This thing's gonna fail. And I can't let that happen. <laughs> and if I can't let that happen, I'm gonna work hard. So the gifting of this group, by the way, is will. They have an incredible will. They work hard. It is actually their gifting. So there's a gifting in the controlling that is unfortunately shrouded in anxiety and reactive tendencies. So the gifting never gets to be experienced by the world around them. The gifting is in service of the reactive tendency. So while I have to control the world around me such that I never fail, that I stay on top and that I win, I have to keep working to control the world to make sure that happens. Of course, I get experience as perfectionistic, autocratic, bureaucratic. And people around us know it. They know it. We all know when we're dealing with someone who's overly controlling. My kids do, right? You know, I, I know this thing. I've noticed that I can clean up our house in two different ways. And uh, like, actually, it might look like I'm cleaning up, just cleaning up the house, but I'm doing it in two different ways. Sometimes I find out someone's coming over to our house and there's this thing that cuts in. I look around the house and go, oh my God, this place looks shit. <laughs> you know what I mean? And then a part of you goes, what are they gonna, and if I'm really honest, right? If I'm really honest, I go, what are they gonna think? I don't, want, I don't want them to think about me in that way. I want them to think that I've got my stuff together. Do you know what I mean? And that this house is ordered, you know what I mean? And, and so I, I look at it through the lens of somebody else and judgment, because it's my judgment too. And that's when I walk into the house going, who's, What's this doing here? This has been here for two days. Can one of you guys come and get this thing? Can you move that? You know, and like I, I thought I saw one of you wipe down the kitchen bench, but I'm seeing smears all over that thing. Like someone come and do that. And I get into this heavy duty kind of task. And I know because of course, there's a certain anxiety in me about cleaning up the house. And that anxiety gets expressed in a kind of a criticality, a, a harshness. I'm cleaning up the house, you know, until my lovely wife will come to me and go, hey, hey, wh why don't you just back off here? You know, and you see, and often it's when I've been away for a few days, I come in, I've been working and then someone's coming over that night and then she's going, you know what? We were all pretty cool when you were gone. It was kind of, <laughs> it was kind of nice here. It's not so good now you're back. Do you want to go for a walk or what do you want? You know, and I'm just thinking I'm cleaning up the house. People are coming over. Why isn't everyone jumping up and doing this stuff? I don't understand. You know, don't they see the urgency? How, I don't know how many managers have said to me, my team don't see the urgency of the work, you know, and a part of me is thinking, thank God for that, you know, because it's driving you beside yourself. You're so urgent with everything. But actually, my kids don't see it. And so I become this kind of controlling and things have got to be organized and put away actually just the way I like it even. Just that I get unusually particular about, you know, the way things are setting up on that kitchen bench. It's ridiculous. So I've noticed that I can do that, but I also notice it's not the only way I can clean up a house. If I'm really more awake to the anxiety and the anxiety is I'm managing the anxiety by trying to control the world around me and that's giving me a temporary relief a little bit. While I temporarily relieve my anxiety by controlling things around me, I'm alienating the people around me. Does that make sense? I'm alienating them. Most of us as controlling managers, we're working really hard down here. We want it all to work, 
but we don't really know that we're being experienced in this way. I can't tell you how many managers who I've, I've felt for, they're hard working and they get their report back and they discover they're 75% controlling. That is, they're experienced as on the 75th percentile, only 25% of managers are more controlling. And they've got their achieving score and they're down at about 30%. And they're thinking, they get the model and before they get their 360, they're thinking, yeah, I reckon I'm about 70, 80% here, up here in achieving, about 30% controlling. And in fact, their own self score shows that. But they're unaware that a good deal of the time, when they're down here, they think they're up here. They're unaware of how their anxiety is oozing, oozing out of them and they're landing like this. They're not, la they're not up here. People are not leaving lifted, inspired, focused, engaged. They're not actually experiencing that around that manager. My kids are not going, yeah, dad, I'm teaming up with you. Let's get this place. You know what I mean? They're kind of cowering, you know, they're kind of, and my 13 year old daughter will actually say to me, why don't you just chill out for a moment? That's when I feel like breaking all the rules with a kid, you know, like, you know I shouldn't even do that for the camera, but you know what I mean? Like I know I, I don't hit my children, but you know what I mean? It's just like, ah, oh, you know, but there are times, there are times when, um, I want to clean up the house and I clean up the house and I'm not quite like that. And I'm cleaning up that. Maybe people are coming over, but I've got a different question in mind. What would I love for them to experience? What do I want to create here? What's the space that I want to create so that when they come, they're really welcomed? That it's, what do I want? I want welcoming. I want warmth. I want ease. I ask myself those sorts of questions. And then I look around the house and go, what needs to happen to create that? And I have this different energy. I'm not so much looking for where it's crap. <laughs> I'm looking for how do I, what do I want to create? What does that look like? And then I can move things. And then I'll engage the kids. They have a completely different experience. They even get excited sometimes. We're going to do that, Dad. Let's do this. Hey, let's get an outdoor fire going. That'd be cool, don't you think? Yeah, that'd be great. I'll get the timber. You know, so we get the dish out and that sort of stuff because they're excited about something they want to create together. We're actually just still preparing the house, but it's a different experience. One of them I'm coming from my reactive self, which my behaviors have as their unspoken strategy to help me avoid or lessen uncomfortable feelings. That's why I'm behaving the way I am. Up here is a different matter. I'm no longer doing that. My actions are in service of what I want to create. So this is controlling. And the primary fear here is failure. Because who am I if I fail? I don't know. I haven't got a strong sense of self yet. So I can't afford for that ever to happen. And some of you will have here in the room, your tendency will be on task and it will be around controlling and, you, and you, how you notice you become controlling. Okay, so that's controlling. We could say more about controlling, but I want to say just statistically, by the way, um, that high levels of controlling are inversely correlated to leadership. Inversely correlated. Strongly inversely correlated. About 0.6 actually. Minus 0.6. So the more controlling you have, the less leadership you have. It's inversely correlated to achieving. <laughs> the more controlling you have, it'll, it'll, it's actually inversely correlated to achieving. But in particular, the more controlling you have, it's deeply inversely correlated to relating. Can you imagine? Perfectionistic, autocratic, controlling, fostering team play, collaborative, interpersonal intelligence, all this just gets sucked right in. So there's a strong inverse relationship across the wheel like that. But there's even an inverse relationship with controlling and achieving. And here's the thing, there's also an inverse relationship between controlling and business results. It actually doesn't make sense to do it for the business.